So a while back, I did a review of this board, and at the time I said, this might be the best kept secret from ASUS. Well, a little bit of time has gone by. The XX70 stock has kind of stabilized. The B-series boards have come out, and I wanted to look back, do a deeper dive into this and see, do I still feel the same way? So if you're not new to the channel, you already know what I'm talking about. But in case you are, today we're gonna dig into ASUS's Rogue Strix X670E-A gaming Wi-Fi board. This is one of ASUS's mid-tier boards for AMD's new AM5 platform, and still one of the only white-ish form factor boards available. So I say white-ish because, I mean, that's what it really is. Um, ASUS technically calls this uh, Moonlight White, but it's really more of a exposed metal silver color with a few white accents here and there. I still think it looks great and it is a pretty sexy board in my opinion. So before I jump into giving you my thoughts on the board after having it for a couple of months, let's hear some marketing speak from ASUS. So ASUS wants us to jump in with the Rogue Strix and suit up for the next gen with a stylish, Rogue Strix X670E-A Gaming. So some of the highlights of this board, of course, it's socket AM5 compatible. Um, it features four M.2 slots, that's two Gen 4 and two Gen 5, as well as PCIe 5.0, 4, and 3 support. The board features ASUS's team power architecture with 16 plus two power phases, as well as high quality alloy chokes and durable capacitors. The board has a true eight layer PCB and helping keep everything cool, it is coupled with uh, very substantial dual heat sinks on the VRM as well as included heat sinks for all four M.2 slots. On the rear IO, this board features pretty much everything you could want with eight USB 3.2 Gen 2 slots, seven being type A, one type C, another USB type C, Gen 3.2 by 2, um, as well as BIOS flashback, clear CMOS, and a whole host of audio visual connections. So that's what ASUS wants you to know. What are my thoughts after having this for a couple of months? Well, first let's talk about the VRM. So ASUS uses 16 plus 2 power stages on that. And I said it before in a previous video, um, but it's worth touching on now. A lot of the X670E boards you have, you're gonna see 20 plus two, 24 plus one and one. It's not that this board is underpowered. Those boards are way overpowered. It is completely unnecessary. And honestly, it's just an easy way to drive the MSRP of a board up. It's very inexpensive for a manufacturer to do that versus the return they get in profitability. Um, the power supply on this is phenomenal. Delivers more than you could possibly want, even if you're using a Ryzen 7950X. Um, and to be fair, if you are using a 7950X, it can be a power hungry beast, but you should check out some of the videos on using the 105 watt eco mode, which is what I've been using. And you literally, you literally get 98% of the performance for 30 to 40% less power consumption. It is unquestionable that you should be running your CPU like that. So one of the other features of this board that I don't want to overlook is it uses ASUS's um, quick release for the PCIe 5.0 slots, as well as the QLatch system for M.2s, which makes installing and uninstalling your components an absolute breeze. Um, it's a nice touch that is expected on a board at this level. As far as cooling goes, while it may be a little hard to see at this angle, the thickness of the heat sinks over the VRM is substantial. Um, and they do phenomenal at dissipating heat, keeping everything running cool, and the AMD processors in this generation can be not just power hungry, but um, a little demanding in the thermal department. So that's, again, a nice touch 
You also have the heat sinks over all four of your M.2 slots. So the way that breaks down is you have an M.2 Gen 5 right here, another M.2 Gen 5 right here, and then a paired Gen 4 slots right there. Um, this big heat sink in the middle is covering the chipset to help that to help that stay cool. Another nice touch right here is on the PCIe Gen 5 slot. Um, you can see that it is reinforced to give it a little bit of extra stability and that can be pretty useful because some of these new GPUs are chonkers. Um, so anything to help make that slot a little more rigid, a little more stable, definitely appreciate it whenever they include that in the motherboard. Did you guys see that? Oh. So I mentioned M.2 Gen 5 support as well as PCIe 5.0 support, right? Is that something you really need? Or is that just a way for um, the manufacturers to drive the price up? Because a lot of the B-series boards don't come with that. Well, the answer is yes and no. So AMD does tend to hang on to their platforms for a while. So there's a good chance, um, especially if you're buying a first gen board, that you're going to reuse it for future product cycles. And you may eventually need that. But as of right now, both NVIDIA's new 40 series, as well as AMD's 7000 series GPUs about to launch, are still PCIe Gen 4. And even when they make that jump to Gen 5 in the future, um, as we saw with prior, as we saw with prior generations when they moved from three to four, the previous still worked just fine. So that might not be a feature that you're going to need for a while. The same goes for the M.2 Gen 5. There are M.2 Gen 5 storages starting to come out. Um, Samsung has one. Um, I've seen a few more hit the market, but they are insanely expensive right now. They're insanely fast, but it is completely unnecessary, even for the most high-end power users. You can grab something like MSI Spadium M480 for right at 200 bucks right now on the two terabyte size. And I've seen the Samsung 980 Pros under $170 on sale for two terabytes. Both of those sticks have 7,000 read and write. Like, you're not going to need faster than that. You're not going to notice a difference in 99% of your daily usage. So I would say, no, they're, they're not necessary. If you really want to save a buck and go with a little bit cheaper board that only has Gen 4 support, you're going to be just fine. It, it'll be years before that actually matters to you. Looking at the rear IO of the board, um, this is one of the spots where I do think Asus maybe left off some features that I would have liked to have seen. So the main thing is USB 4 support. While this board has a ton of USB 3.2 Gen 2 and Gen 2 by 2 ports, um, including USB 4 would have been nice, especially in the $400 price range. One of the things this board does include that is absolutely critical for a board at this level is BIOS flashback as well as clear CMOS button. So you're gonna see this a lot uh, when a new product launches, especially early in its life cycle. ASUS has already dropped three or four BIOS updates for this board. And this is the tip that I wanted to leave you guys with. If you get this or really any X670 board right now, you're gonna to wanna to update your BIOS before you do your initial post. So one of the things that have been fixed along with a host of performance and compatibility issues is improvements in the initial posting whenever you're building your system. Now, how do you update your BIOS if your system's not built? Well, that's where BIOS flashback comes in and we're gonna do a video on that soon. In fact, uh, I'll have a complete tutorial on that coming out in just a few days, but all you need is another computer that's working and a USB 2.0 flash drive. Basically, you'll download the new BIOS file on that. You stick it right into the BIOS flashback USB port on the back of the motherboard. And all you have to do is connect your power supplies, ATX and EPS connectors, 
hit the BIOS flashback button and that is it. You're done. It takes about five minutes. It'll completely update your BIOS. Then you can go ahead and assemble your computer. That is going to significantly improve your initial post speed um, as well as your performance right out of the box. If your computer's already built, it's much easier. You know, you could just go into the BIOS, go to the update and download the new BIOS and it'll do it for you. But it's really important if you're getting one of these, I can almost guarantee it's been sitting in the warehouse since ASUS put out their last BIOS update and it will greatly improve your experience if you just knock that out up front.